Morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you have questions about the longevity products or the longevity business or formulations or something you may have heard about or read about in the news, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. And of course, if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please go to brightsideben.com criticalhealthnews.com or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. 866-735-2470. And if you're interested in checking out our Truth Treatment products, make sure you take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel as well as our Truth Balm and Truth Serum and Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream, all made with lots and lots and lots of vitamin C. Only active and functional ingredients in all our truth products. You're not paying for water and filler and wax and oil and preservative and fragrance. You're only paying for what your skin uses and needs. And that is why true skin health products last you four, five, even up to six months for one jar. Of course, you're not having, you don't have to interface with any of the toxic or unnecessary ingredients that you do with most skincare products. You know, when you buy a skincare product, typically you're paying for 90 to 95% stuff you're not even using. What's the point of that? TruthTreatments.com, TruthTreatments.com. We also blog on TruthTreatments.com. Okay, so we are talking about pregnenolone, progesterone, the steroid hormones, all of which are derived from cholesterol, or more accurately, are types of cholesterol. Cholesterol, in turn, is derived from fat and sugar in the diet. We eat sugar, we eat fat. Fancy chemistry takes place and cholesterol is produced. Of course, if you eat cholesterol, that will also increase cholesterol in your blood, and your body can make steroid hormones from the cholesterol you eat, as well as from the cholesterol that you make. The steroid steroid hormones are one of two classes of hormones. You get your water-soluble peptide hormones. Those are produced from genes. And then you have your fat-soluble steroid hormones. Those are produced from cholesterol, whether it's in the diet or whether it's the cholesterol we make. Because of the relationship, by the way, between the steroid hormones and the diet, there's lots we can do via eating behavior to regulate the production of the steroid hormones, particularly when it comes to fat absorption and the intestine. Just another reason why you want to be using your ultimate nightly essence and ultimate enzymes, as well as perhaps bile salts and lecithin on a regular, if not a daily basis. They support the production of your fatty hormones. They support your production of your steroid hormones. By the way, apple cider vinegar can be helpful too. You'll process and utilize fats and fatty vitamins more effectively when you're using your ultimate nightly essence, when you're using your ultimate enzymes. If you're using lecithin and bile salts and apple cider vinegar on a regular basis, you'll be able to leverage the steroid hormone system much more effectively. As far as the fatty vitamins go, vitamins D and E and E and K, 
or D and E and A and K. I call it DEEK. Those are your four fatty vitamins. Vitamins A and D can actually be thought of as hormones. Vitamin D is a kind of a steroid hormone. In essence, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a version of cholesterol. And vitamin E acts to protect, to protect hormones. Vitamin K stimulates steroid hormone activity, particularly when it comes to building strong bones. So the steroid hormones are the fatty hormones. They're the cholesterol hormones. They're versions of cholesterol. They're involved in building. They're involved in growth. They're involved in anti-aging. There are youth hormones. And they're involved in our long-term responses to life. We've been talking about pregnenolone and progesterone. Pregnenolone is uber mild, super mild. Progesterone, less so. Progesterone does have, it's further away from cholesterol. So you got to be a little bit more respectful of progesterone than you do pregnenolone. You can buy pregnenolone pretty readily on the internet or at health food stores. You can buy progesterone cream. You can't buy straight progesterone, but you can buy progesterone cream over the counter. But most progesterone creams that you get over the counter will only have a very small, almost an insignificant dose of progesterone. If you really want to do progesterone right, you need a doctor's prescription for it. And the best way to do it is to get a compounding pharmacist to make a 10% cream. If you use a 10% cream, you need only about a quarter teaspoonful or so every day. You can get yourself a pretty nice dose of progesterone. If you use, uh, if you go on the internet or you buy over the counter progesterone cream, you're not going to get very much progesterone at all. And sometimes you won't even get any progesterone. Sometimes uh, a lot of companies will use yam or soy and they'll tell you it's progesterone. So you can still get some progesterone in some products. Swanson makes one, I think. Um, but it's very small, almost insignificant. So pregnenolone is a, is a mild and benign hormone. Progesterone is also mild, but it does have, uh, I don't want to say toxicity, but it's, it's more potent than pregnenolone. So you got to be a little bit careful. Both of them, both pregnenolone and progesterone are calming hormones. They're both protective hormones. They're both coping hormones. And both pregnenolone and progesterone are converted into super strong stress hormones. Pregnenolone is, is tweaked and it becomes progesterone, and then progesterone is tweaked and it becomes cortisol and, and substances similar to cortisol. Progesterone and pregnenolone also get converted into blood pressure control hormones. The steroid system controls blood pressure. There's a hormone called aldosterone that nobody ever talks about, which is unfortunate because it's super important, and uh, it controls salt balance. Aldosterone is important for helping control salt in the, in the blood. And aldosterone also comes from progesterone and pregnenolone. Here's the thing about progesterone and pregnenolone. Yes, it's true. They can be converted into our stress management hormones, but it's also true that progesterone and pregnenolone can be converted into our sex hormones, into our growth hormones. When I say sex hormones like testosterone and, and estrogen, I'm talking about growth hormones and anti-aging hormones and youth hormones and healing hormones and beautiful skin hormones and sex hormones, libido hormones, fertility hormones. So uh, progesterone and pregnenolone have a choice. They can either get converted into stress hormones or they can get converted into anti-aging hormones. I should say the body has a choice. The body can either convert our pregnenolone and progesterone into helping us deal with stress or into anti-aging us, but it can't do both as effectively. So if you're off making a lot of stress hormone, you're not gonna be making your anti-aging hormones. That's the take home message here. The more stress hormones we make, the less fertility hormones we're going to have available for us because they're both being derived from the same source. So if your body's turning that pregnenolone and progesterone into cortisol, it's not going to have enough available for testosterone. For guys who are dealing with ED or guys who have got body fat issues or want to build more muscle as they get older or for women who want to stay away from wrinkles or who are trying to have a baby, the more your body is converting pregnenolone and progesterone into stress hormones, the less anti-aging youth and fertility and muscle building hormone it's going to be able to make. Just another reason to calm the body down. You have to pick one health strategy. You have to pick one thing, especially if you're dealing with uh, chronic degenerative disease symptoms. It's calm the body down. Have that pregnenolone and progesterone being shunted off into estrogen and testosterone rather than into cortisol. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information right after this. Okay, we are back on The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. 
844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, health, nutrition, success story you want to share, if you want to contribute to the conversation, or if you have questions about our Truth Skin Health products or skin care formulations, ingredients, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do on the bright side. Got a couple lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. Of course, if you want to purchase any of our Truth Skin Health products, head over to truthtreatments.com. Take a look at our Retinol 5% Gel, as well as our Truth Serum, Truth Balm, Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you want to pick one product, and I get this question a lot, what's the one product I should get? Start off with the Truth Serum. That's the most powerful Oh, that's got the most vitamin C of all the products. If you're dealing with some kind of rash or burn or sunburn, or if you've got a child who's got diaper rash, a baby who has diaper rash, or, or perhaps eczema, then you want our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream. If you're looking for a night product, that's our Truth Balm. And if you want a, a, a once a week or even twice a week treatment for hyperpigmentation, dark spots or, or wrinkles or, or uh, accelerated aging of any kind, or if you want to prevent aging, then you want a retinol 5% gel. But it is strong. It'll make you flake. If you use it more than uh, twice a week, you'll get some really serious flaking. I recommend folks use it once or twice a week. You can find out all about our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we are talking progesterone, pregnenolone, the steroid hormones. If you're off making, uh, if you're ter- if you're uh, turning your pregnenolone and progesterone into cortisol, you're not going to have enough to make your fun hormones, your sex hormones, your growth hormones, your fertility hormones, your creativity hormones, your bone building hormones, your anti wrinkle hormones. And this is just another reason why you want to make sure that no matter what your health challenge is, or even if you're not dealing with a health challenge and you just don't want to have one, you relax the body, especially with oxygenation and deep breathing. One of progesterone's really interesting roles, like pregnenolone, involves mental health and the health of the brain, brain health. The brain contains large amounts of progesterone. For menopausal women, progesterone, according to research published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Science, appears to be related to mental cognition, as well as for verbal memory. This is in menopausal women who sometimes notice they have a little bit of confusion. Well, when you go through menopause, your progesterone drops precipitously. Estrogen drops too, but not as dramatically as progesterone, and progesterone deficiency is way more significant for menopausal women than than, uh, estrogen deficiency. This protective effect on the brain is not just for menopausal women, it's also for men. Men's brains make progesterone. It's also for the developing fetus. Progesterone is important for keeping the uh, fetal brain tissue healthy or developed appropriately. And progesterone is also important, like pregnenolone, for folks dealing with brain injury. Traumatic brain injury has a protective effect, and it also has a healing effect for the injured brain. So progesterone, like pregnenolone, is a coping hormone. It's an anti-stress hormone. It gets turned into cortisol. And when progesterone levels drop, as we get older, we become more dependent on cortisol. As progesterone levels drop with age, Cortisol becomes much more relevant, and cortisol, elevated cortisol, is extremely common in older folks. Part of it, of course, is, uh, is due to a, a long life of bodily abuse. Part of it is due to insulin resistance and problems with sugar, but prop, part of it has to do with deficiencies in progesterone. The body becomes more dependent on cortisol as an anti-stress hormone. One of the neat things about using progesterone and pregnenolone for stress is your body doesn't have to be as dependent on cortisol. If you're, uh, if you're aging, say you're in your 50s or 60s or 70s and you're having problems sleeping perhaps, jitteriness, depression, chances are pretty darn good you're dealing with elevated cortisol. Same thing with uh, osteoporosis or skin aging or the accumulation of belly fat. All of these are signs that your body is starting to produce cortisol. Using progesterone pregnenolone can help keep the body from being so dependent on this, uh, this much stronger stress hormone. And so using progesterone as well as pregnenolone can be helpful for older folks who are dealing with some of these issues, particularly osteoporosis, depression, well, really anything that has to do with cortisol, using progesterone can be very, very helpful. Progesterone, like pregnenolone, can also be helpful for seizure control. Progesterone is also important for the respiratory system. It it, uh, promotes respiration. It's been used to treat emphysema and obstructive lung disease. 
Progesterone is important for the cardiovascular system. It's important for the health of the heart and the circulatory, uh, and the circulatory system. And progesterone is a bone-building substance, unlike estrogen. A lot of women know that if they are dealing with osteoporosis, the doctor will say, well, I think we ought to put you on estrogen. Well, estrogen doesn't help you build bone. What estrogen does is it slows down the breakdown of bone. Bone is constantly being remodeled. That's actually what they call it. They call it remodeling. Your bone is being broken down and then it's being built up. This is an important process because it assures the body of having a constant supply of strong bone out with the old and in with the new, as they say. Well, how does estrogen work? Well, it slows down the breakdown of old bone. So you still have your bone, but it's weaker bone. And by the way, this is how Fosamax works and the drugs they call the bisphosphonate drugs, such as Boniva. All of these drugs slow down bone breakdown. They don't do anything to build bone. Building bone is in the realm of, of progesterone. So if you're really interested in building bone, make sure, you're, make sure you're using a progesterone supplement or even pregnenolone for that matter. That can have a positive effect on, on bone building via its conversion into progesterone. Progesterone is a pro-libido vitamin. Estrogen shuts down the libido, shuts down sexual desire, and progesterone stimulates it. Estrogen amps up the immune system. Progesterone calms down the immune system. The thymus, the body, a really very interesting gland that nobody ever talks about, right, located right up, kind of in the upper part of your chest. That's your body's immune gland, and the thymus contains ex extremely high amounts of progesterone. There's, there's probably more, well, I don't want to say the most in the body, but there's a lot of progesterone in the thymus, and this points to progesterone's very important role in building the immune system. So progesterone is your calming hormone, and it opposes or antagonizes estrogen, which is an amp-up hormone. And if you're on hormone replacement therapy, or specifically if you're on estrogen replacement therapy, you always want to make sure you're using progesterone to balance out the stimulating effects of estrogen. The stimulating effect of estrogen is what accounts for its cancer-causing properties. According to the National Institute of Environmental Health Sciences, Estrogen is a known cancer promoter. Yes, estrogen is a known cancer promoter. That alone should tell you that if you're on hormone replacement therapy, you want to be extremely careful with it. If you're on, I should say, estrogen replacement therapy, you want to be extremely careful with it. Progesterone's calming effects can help balance out and have, uh, protect against some of the cancer-causing effects of estrogen. Progesterone's calming effects also make it an ideal treatment for menopausal symptoms, hot flashes, insomnia, emotional jitteriness, anxiety. All of these can be induced by estrogen and some of its derivatives. One of the problems with estrogen is not estrogen itself, but the derivatives, the breakdown products, the metabolites of estrogen. And these substances, which are technically called catechol estrogens, C-A-T-E-C-H-O-L, can be balanced out by, by using progesterone. Progesterone improves the activity of serotonin. It helps improve mood. Serotonin is a coping hormone like progesterone and pregnenol. It's slightly different. Serotonin is a vigilance hormone. It's an awareness hormone. It's a daytime hormone. It helps us, helps us uh, become aware of the ups and downs that occur in daytime life. While progesterone improves the activity of serotonin receptors, in a sense, progesterone is a natural SSRI drug. It's a non-toxic SSRI drug of sorts. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a break and come back with more good health information and your phone calls right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you're on hold, hang tight. We'll get to you here momentarily. And we do have a couple, uh, we do have a line open for you, 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central. And 24-7 on the archive pages at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Uh, from the University of Dundee in, and uh, Glasgow in Scotland, this is research from the British Heart Foundation, people with kidney disease have a greater risk of having a heart attack, and it turns out that vitamin K can be helpful. Vitamin K, as we were talking earlier, has a role to play when it comes to steroid hormones. It actually activates certain steroid, uh, activates or, or, or stimulates the, the effects 
of certain uh, steroid hormones, particularly when it comes to bone health, but apparently also when it comes to kidney disease, kidney disease vitamin K can also play a very important role. Vitamin K is our calcium controlling vitamin and one of the reasons why we end up with kidney, kidney disease and strokes and problems with the blood. Uh, including hypertension and cardiovascular diseases because of calcification, too much calcium floating around in the blood. Now this doesn't have to do so much with, uh, with the kind of calcium we're getting or the amount of calcium we're getting in the diet. It has to do with how the body processes calcium and vitamin K plays a major, major role in helping the body utilize, utilize calcium as well as helping the body store and process it. Uh, let's see, this one here from the journal Cell Metabolism, new clues in mice link cholesterol to fertility. Well, now you guys know why that happens. Cholesterol is super important stuff. New study, uh, this one was published in the June issue of Cell Metabolism, implicates cholesterol when it comes to making fertility hormones, particularly in the ovaries. And by the way, all of these hormones that we're talking about, these steroid hormones, while they are primarily made in our reproductive glands, in the testes and the ovaries, they're also made in the adrenal glands. In fact, as a woman goes into menopause, most of these steroid hormones are actually made in the adrenal glands. And that's why keeping your adrenals healthy with relaxation strategies, as well as things like zinc and iodine and, and, uh, and salt, magnesium also, can be so important for helping, work with, helping the body work with steroids and helping calm down the adrenal glands if you're dealing with adrenal fatigue. One of, the, one of the classic signs of adrenal fatigue issues is if you feel a little woozy or dizzy when you stand up or when you uh, sit up out of a, a lying down position. If that occurs to you, if you're sitting and you stand up and you feel a little dizzy or if you get out of bed and you feel a little bit dizzy or if you're exercising, you're, you're bending down and standing up and you feel a little dizzy or woozy, that's a classic sign of adrenal fatigue. And you may want to think about using some of these strategies uh, nutritional strategies like zinc and magnesium and iodine and, and vitamin B12 and the B complex, all of which are super important for adrenal health, salt water, uh, uh, Celtic sea salt or Himalayan salt and water. These are very important for helping, helping uh, stabilize adrenal health as well as relaxation techniques, things like massage or yoga, stretching, hot tubs, hot water, and of course, good old deep diaphragmatic breathing, focusing on the exhale. Always want to exhale a little bit more than you inhale. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let us motivate to Marin, Marin County. What's going on, Flynn? How you doing? Welcome to the Bright Side. Good, man. It's a bit of an early morning for me. I was up late last night talking to a good friend of mine. All right. Um, he's had an addiction to uh, benzodiazepine. Benzodiazepines, Valium, Xanax, that kind of thing? Uh, Adafan. Adafan, okay. That's a that's a yeah. particularly nasty one. So he's trying so to wean himself that, trying to wean himself yeah. off of it. Well, he already got off of it. Um, oh, good. Um, and uh, he just has he had he protracted a withdrawal syndrome, and he reacts to almost all pharmaceuticals. And he was on them for two years, and he had he had a severe withdrawal, and now he gets these just he's extremely sensitive to everything and he gets these crazy symptoms of stress intolerance anxiety mental yeah. confusion mental confusion apathy exercise intolerance um, he's got a whole laundry list life. there whole laundry list yeah. is he on a supplement this is a guy whose body's screaming for nutritional supplements he may be suffering yeah. from nutritional deficiency actually that's what it could very well be here's a couple first of all get him on the healthy star pack as soon as possible just get the basics in there in his system and then there's a, a few nutrients that can help calm him down a little bit uh, pregnenolone which we've been talking about i don't know if you've heard us but for the last few weeks we've been talking about that that can be really helpful for him 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams a day he may want to try some gaba GABA, maybe 200 to 500 milligrams a day. Actually, a night is the best way to do his GABA. Absolutely, positively get him on magnesium, 2,000 or so milligrams a day. Um, he may benefit from lithium orotate, maybe 5 milligrams or so, a capsule every day. And then uh, a couple other things that, that he may get some benefits from. Uh, the ultimate niacin, which is a new, new longevity product, a timed release niacin, 500 milligrams a day. Uh, niacin is super important for brain health, helps him make serotonin, all of which can have coping, uh, coping benefits. Keeping his sugar down, I cannot stress that enough. Keeping his sugar down and having him do more protein, especially whey protein. If, he can, if he's not a vegan or vegetarian, have him do whey protein. 
uh, very stabilizing and very grounding as opposed to sugar, which is very uh, uh, exciting, shall we say, not in a good way. It, it, it amps the body up, so keeping his sugar down, and he may also want to try nutrients to help his body process sugar, uh, things like the B vitamins as well as niacin and zinc and magnesium and selenium and sulfur for that matter and of course chromium and vanadium. And then do not underestimate the importance of calming the body down, hot tubs, hot water, and also deep diaphragmatic breathing. In fact, when he goes into those jittery modes, just have him sit on the couch and slow the body down with deep diaphragmatic breathing, focusing on the exhale. The exhale is where we, where we relax the body, not the inhale. So always exhale a little bit more than you inhale. Okay, I hope I helped you, man. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. He, well, he talks about, I'm a little, you know, um, I'm, worried that I'm not going to be able to get him to do so many things because he gets so paranoid about what he takes, if it's going to happen. Have him listen to the archive. Take him to the archive and have him listen. Have him do whatever he wants to do. Or you can send me an email if you like and put your phone number in there and and, and I'll get back to you. Or uh, and this just, is all, just this, go ahead. This is all stuff that, that helps his GABA receptors because that's what he's really... In a sense. In a sense. Yeah. You know, more than that. But partially, yeah, let things like the GABA will do it. Uh, you know, they actually give GABA-like drugs. Do you ever hear this drug called uh, Lyrica? Have you heard of this drug, Lyrica? They give it to you for, pe- yeah. for people with fibromyalgia and, and emotional disorders and anxiety. That's basically GABA, a, f- a tweaked version of GABA. So, yeah, if he takes GABA and does some of these other things, he'll definitely notice a relaxing, a relaxing effect, especially the sugar, by the way. All right, I got to move, Flynn. Thanks so much for your call, man. Take care, bro. All right. Robert in Vegas. What's up, man? Welcome to the Bright Side. Thomas, it's been a six hour. You good morning. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. Thanks for calling. What's up? Sure. And before I get to my point, I got to say, man, listen, listen to you a lot. You are an absolute nutritional savant. <laughs> and I hope you. you know what the word savant means. I do, do know it. You? I know what it is in terms of an idiot savant, but if you call me a nutritional savant. No, you ain't savant. no idiot, bro. You ain't <laughs> <All> no idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're the second half. You're, you're the man. Thank anyway, you, Robert. I appreciate um, that. I was listening to ESPN, Mike, my morning show the other day. Okay. Uh, sports talk. And uh, a guy named John Sally was on there, and I don't know if you follow the NBA. John who? John, who? No, what? John Sally. Uh, He's a basketball player, Pistons. right? Was he a basketball player? Early, early 90s Detroit Pistons, him and yes. Isaiah Thomas, uh, Bill Ambeer. Yes. Anyway, he, like you, is a passion. I hear music. Robert, you, I, you're cutting out. Uh, hang tight. We've got to take a break, and we'll, we'll get your first up when we come back, okay? Don't go away. I want to hear what you have to say. All right. Thank I'm you. Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll take a break and come back with your phone calls and more hot information on the world of nutrition when we come back. Don't go away. Okay, we're back on the bright side. Pharmacist Ben here, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Robert in Vegas. You there, Robert? Yeah, I'm right here, Ben. Uh, I get the point. So anyway, John Sally is like you. He's a passionate vegan. Okay. He was well, I'm not a vegan. Uh, I'm not, I can't oh, say I'm, I'm a vegan. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, he, let's say, well, he is. And um, he was saying that a lot of people who eat meat use the defense, well, uh, you eat meat to get your protein. He says, well, what about the uh, primates, gorillas and apes and such? They are as strong as 10 men, yet they live on plants. That's called a straw man. That's called a straw man. When you make a fake argument and then knock it down, that's not true. There's the, reason, the reason veganism, the problem with veganism, and the reason why eating animal-based foods, and I'm not including meat in that, is so important is because of growth factors. There are elements in... Uh, in uh, uh, eggs and in dairy, which are not vegan-friendly foods, obviously, called growth factors. They're only found in egg and dairy. They're not found in any other foods. So if you're vegan, you're missing out on those. Secondly, there are substances like vitamin B12 and building proteins that are are found in higher concentrations in animal protein. You can get away with being a vegan, but you just got to be much more careful. And as far as the primate argument goes, these primates have to eat all day long. That's why how they do it. They, they don't do it like us where they eat periodically throughout the day. They got to eat calories all day long in order to get the nutrients that they need. Protein is a, uh, ver- 
animal protein is a very dense source of nutrients in addition to the growth factors, which are extremely important, and I don't want to marginalize those because they're very, very important, and no vegans ever talk about those. Nobody ever really talks about them. So you're not going to get those, number one. You're not going to get the super high concentrations, the density that you get of protein that you get when you do dairy and egg, as well as meat and fish to a certain extent. So you got to eat a lot more calories. And as far as those primates go, yes, it's true. They're big and strong, but they spend their entire day eating, which we can't do. So between all of that, the, the veganism argument is just silly to me. However, the one place where veganism is not silly and where it, you have to take it seriously is in the ethical nature of eating animals. You know, I, I know we live on planet Earth and there's a food chain and everything eats everything else, but it's just troubling to have to kill something to eat it and then to eat it, it just I can see how people don't want to do it. But to try to make a scientific argument for it, it's not fair. It, it's dishonest. Uh, the fact of the matter is, and by the way, sometimes there's a guy named, there's a guy named uh, T, uh, Thomas Campbell, I think his name is. He wrote a, he, I forgot the name of his book, The China, the China Diet. He, he wrote a few books like this. And he, what they do is, what veganisms and vegetarian, vegans and vegetarians do, is they'll point to the fact that people eat meat and get cancer, or people eat meat or dairy and they get sick. What they're not telling you is, is that the meat is overcooked, or the dairy is from hormones, and uh, 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 cows that have been given hormones and antibiotics. So they're skewing the results. It's not not really fair. Just if you take good clean meat, for, uh, a wild meat, for example, that you hunted, wild game that's eating grass and that's in its natural environment, and or fish the same way, you can't compare. There's no vegan food that can even come close, that can even touch the nutrient density of that kind of food. Is vegan? Is going vegan a good idea if you're? If you're stuck eating the way we eat in this country, where you eat crappy dairy and crappy eggs and eggs that have been, or eggs from chickens that have been fed hormones and antibiotics, you know what I'm saying? How we process sure. our animal food? Yes, that's sure. a problem. Sure. But to try to say that, to try to apply that problem to just the, just, just the basic facts of what's in meat and what's in dairy, the, there's no way vegetables can even touch the nutrient density that's in, in animal foods. And by the way, as an aside, which we've talked about before, but for new listeners, there's no toxic meat, but there's lots of toxic plants. And there's lots of plants that people will react to that contain substances called lectins that can initiate arthritis and, and, and immune problems and digestive problems, etc. But there's no toxic meat. So that's just as an aside. That's not based on that has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. But the idea that somehow veganism and ve vegetarianism is all clean and lovely and benign and light, and meat is evil and dark, and, and, and animal foods are somehow satanic, that doesn't wash. And I don't buy that. So you can get wow. by as a vegan, but you're going to miss out on a lot of stuff. Uh, you're, it's going to be harder to get everything you need. Does that help, Robert? It absolutely does. You just killed his argument. Dang. Well, I, well yeah. I, I had no idea. Uh, okay, you, good you deal. Killed it. Wow. Oh, and by the way, sorry, I didn't know you were, weren't a vegan. I, the way you talked, I assumed you were. But so no. you eat meat, but just not a lot of it. I don't eat a lot of meat. I Not a lot at all. And I, But I do eat fish, and I do eat eggs, and uh, I do okay. like the, the, okay. the, the uh, wonderful cheese, Jordan Rubin's wonderful cheese, by the way. Gotcha, uh, gotcha. Makes perfect sense. Okay, thanks, bud. Okay. Take care, Robert. Have a good day, man. Thanks for calling. Thanks for the kind words, too. Appreciate it. Okay, let's go to uh, Dave in Connecticut. Welcome to the Bright Side. Dave, what's up, man? Doing. Um, I recently had blood work done, and um, because I was having severe anxiety and panic attacks, and I've had it my whole life, but the last few months have been like severe. Um, I got some blood work done and some urine analysis, and they found that my cortisol levels were uh, a lot higher than what they should be. I think they were 115. I think the high side was like 80, um, and all my neurotransmitters through urine, which isn't really you know uh, accurately accurate, if you will. But they were weren't even they weren't even able to register. How old are you, Dave? I'm 35. I'll be 36 in June. What's your height to weight? I'm uh, I'm five seven and a half. Got to put that half in there. Okay. And I'm uh, two 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 fifteen. But I'm I'm muscular. I've been okay. like an athlete my whole life. Gotcha. Okay, good deal. All right, so a couple things. Cortisol levels will go up for several reasons. Number one, they'll go up for physiologic reasons. If there's some kind of degener degeneration in the body, they'll go up. If your body is under chronic stress from the digestive system, they'll go up. And if you have blood sugar issues, they'll go up. So from a physiologic perspective, number one, you want to figure out what's going on in terms of the digestive system. If you have any food allergies or food intolerances or you're not processing food correctly, and that means doing a food diary, eliminating problem foods, going ketogenic, um, uh, doing a Swero V cleanse or a fast, 
a couple of days and then doing a food diary, kind of cleaning up the digestive system and then also using nutrients that support the digestive system. And chief among those, of course, are the probiotics, the good bacteria. I like the nightly essence from longevity as well as fermented foods and vegetable juices. That's the first thing. So we want to address the, the physiologic aspect, keeping your blood sugar stable, more protein and less foods that spike your blood sugar and nutrients that help your body process sugar. And then uh, uh, if you, I'm assuming you don't have any degenerative health issues, you sound young and you sound strong, so you're probably okay there. Also, slowing the body down with deep breathing is extremely important. And I know I said it a few times already today, but I'll say it again. Slowly in through the nose, slowly out through the nose, making sure you're exhaling more than you're inhaling. Both oxygen and carbon dioxide are both important. And in the exhale, if you exhale slowly, the carbon dioxide will stay in your body a little bit longer or in your blood a little bit longer. So making sure you're exhaling a little bit longer than you're inhaling and doing it periodically throughout the day. You should be doing it two or three times a day and then when you're driving or waiting in line at the bank or at a restaurant waiting for food, whenever you can think about it, slow deep breathing can make a huge difference. The next thing is you want to want to start supplementing with pregnenolone uh, or progesterone, but I would do pregnenolone first. Get yourself on 100 to 200 milligrams a day. The more pregnenolone and progesterone are available for your body to utilize, the less they're going to have to depend on cortisol. So using 100 okay. to 200 milligrams of pregnenolone at night and then perhaps some progesterone. Uh, if you want to use some progesterone cream, a little bit of uh, progesterone cream. But I would, I would stick with the, with the pregnenolone if I were you. And then please don't underestimate. We don't talk about this a lot, but it's extremely important. If you're dealing with elevated cortisol, there's, there's a good possibility there's mental and emotional things happening where you're obsessively thinking about certain things or you're worried about certain things or you've got some, uh, some unhealthy emotional things happening, anger or, or Forgive or lack of forgiveness or uh, depression or anything like that. You got those have to be addressed as well. I don't want to be the kind of nutritionist who just says take this vitamin or this mineral or this supplement. It doesn't work that way. Uh, healing and health are multidimensional: spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. In that order, by the way, the physical's the end. So you got to address the mental component. You know, get self-help books, whatever that is. Read anything you could do about how you control the mind, how you control the emotions. I love the book, The Power of Now. That's a great book. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of wonderful. We had a guy yesterday. He's got a book called Natural Born Heroes. Anything you could do to work yeah, on the yeah, mental and, and mental and emotional aspects, and as well as finding spiritual connection. I don't want to make this too much about, you know, make this a spiritual show, but that's extremely important when it comes to health and wellness. The spiritual aspect. When we feel separated from our from our environment, we, we are the survival, uh, the survival chemistry kicks in when we feel separated. In fact, the word sin, S-I-N, sin, is, comes from the Latin to separate. When we feel separated from the world, when we feel separated from our, from our, our fellow man, when we feel separated from the universe, our body kicks into survival mode and that will jack up your cortisol really fast. So working on the spiritual connection is really important. And I, I know I don't say it enough, but it's so, so darn important. We're spiritual beings before we're anything else. And understanding that we're all connected into this universal God force, whatever you want to call it, is a key part of staying healthy and well. Dave, I'm out of time, buddy. But thanks for your call. I hope we helped you out. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Sorry if we left you on hold. Got a call in early on the bright side at 844-236-6010. Check out our skin health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. And if you want to purchase any of the longevity products, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Have yourselves an awesome, wonderful, beautiful, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now. <laughs>